Welcome to the Flow Cave. Here we have our long-term test bike, the Norco Sight. This is a bike that we've absolutely loved riding for quite a long time now, and we've used it to test a whole lot of different parts. And we've tweaked it, we've fiddled with it, and uh, let's take a look at the uh, current setup we are really happy with at the moment. We started out with a medium sight C9.2. Uh, fast forward to now, the only thing that remains original spec is the frame and the front tyre. It's a super playful 29er with fantastic frame geometry that loves to corner hard and really fast. Each time we get back on it, we are reminded why a mid-travel 29er with balanced suspension and grippy tyres is the base for a really great trail bike. The SRAM drivetrain and the Shimano brakes um, obviously say a lot about our preference with um, what, what we like from the two major parties at the moment. So uh, the XTR brakes are absolutely brilliant. While this generation have not been without their share of inconsistencies, this particular set have been really great. The power is ample, but it's the way that they manage heat building to maintain that power on the long descents to give them the edge over the comparable SRAM guide brakes, for instance. The SRAM Eagle drivetrain needs little introduction. This set has been flawless after many hours of riding in all sorts of conditions. The gear range is one thing, but the silent and positive chain and teeth interface wins us over against the Shimano drivetrain that the bike originally came with. It's super quiet. We've had all sorts of suspension fitted to the site and we've rested on our favourite setup, a uh, Fox 34 fork and a Fox Float DPS rear shock. After swapping backwards and forth between the RockShox Pike at least half a dozen times, we've come to the conclusion that we prefer the Fox's performance on this trail. The weight and price is super close between the two. The Fox is only around 100 grams lighter, but around $80 dearer. And the performance is also very close. We feel personal preference and individual experiences with each brand would sway most people to choosing either fork. But if it were us, the way that the Fox 34 handles the trail and the changing surfaces is its best attribute. The 34 seems to work so much harder than the Pike, taking the sting out of the sharp impacts better and with the ultra supple upper part of the suspension stroke keeping the front end of the bike super composed and transferring less feedback to our hands. The Pike does feel slightly more robust than the 34 and the improvements to the adjustability range with the Charger 2 damper are a huge improvement over previous versions and the low speed compression adjustment in particular is, is really good. Fox comes out on top at the back too. The DPS shock is markedly more responsive to quick and light impacts and more adjustable than the Rock Shocks Deluxe we had tried back to back too. Righto, down to the wheels. Well, these carbon wheels from Bontrager have been a real standout too. After we ditched the supply of plastic rim strips, which super glued with terrible force to the, to the tyres, and we ran regular tubeless tape instead, they have been stellar. With 29mm internal rims, it's a sweet spot between wide and not too wide, and the hubs are spinning like a dream after almost a year of hammering in all seasons and uh, a lot of pedantic bike washing. The Ergon saddles and grips are an item that we'd never want to change. They're super comfy. As is the first generation Fox Transfer dropper post we have here. Although it's getting a bit old, it's still going up and down like new. So now it's time to really uh, shake up this bike a little bit. We're going to uh, change a whole bunch of different parts. So we've got a, um, an E13 um, TRS race cassette at 11 speed with a 9 to 46 tooth spread. We're going to put back on the uh, old X, X Shimano XT uh, and see how that works. It's, it's something that the, uh, the YT um, bikes have been coming out with a Shimano drivetrain with an E13 cassette. Um, should be a really good option for a lot of aftermarket people wanting more, more gear range um, without breaking the bank, buying a whole new um, drivetrain. We've got the uh, new FSA Afterburner uh, wide rim wheel set, which will be going on there, aluminium set to um, see how they feel on the trail. And we've got some nice carbon cranks from FSA, the SLKs. So uh, yeah, we've got a couple of nice bits coming up. Another thing we're really excited about uh, fitting is the new Continental Baron tyre. This thing is a, is a super aggressive, open, soft compound tyre, made in Germany, super expensive, nice and tough. Um, well, we're gonna, get, gonna give it a shot. We're gonna fill those um, Continental tyres with this new finish line sealant, which claims to last the life of the tyre. So uh, let's see how that holds up. And probably the most exciting part of the, uh, the rebuild is this, the new Cane Creek Helm Fork. It's the coil 29er. So there's a coil spring inside here. We haven't used coils uh, for many years. Um, very curious to see how they feel and stack up against the modern day of uh, air sprung fork. Um, 
first impressions, this fork is actually beautiful to, um, to look at and to feel. The dials are super high quality. Um, apparently you can uh, change the travel internally without using any fancy tools or swapping any parts, uh, which would be really cool for a lot of people who might want to try it on a few different bikes. Um, cool, stay tuned for that. Okay, so there you have it. Our uh, Norco Sight long-term test bike. Next time um, you'll see it, it'll look very different. Stay tuned.